Hello everyone, welcome to Trend Talks. Today I have the pleasure to talk with Jan Anderson. He is based in Finland in the city Helsinki. He is the market development manager at Wärtsilä Energy. And Wärtsilä is a global leader in smart technologies and complete life cycle solutions for the marine and energy markets. You may also know Wärtsilä for its energy storage and optimization solutions. And Jan is already working at Wärtsilä for more than 12 years. Welcome, Jan. Thanks a lot, Edwin. Thanks for having me. Jan, we're going to talk about energy storage today. Um, so what is, in general, your outlook on the energy storage market? Uh, so in, in general, I would say there is a lot of potential uh, in Europe, um, and uh, but I don't really see the, the market really taking off. And um, on, on that, there is actually three points here why I don't really see this taking off. One is price of storage. Even though the storage prices has been coming down quite quite much during the, the later years, uh, it still is not enough to make a good business case from, from the revenues that you get from the market. The second one is, is regulation, undoubtedly. Um, we see that the reg- developments in regulation in Europe is, is a bit slow. Um, we have, for example, double taxation, which is killing business cases. And some countries we have that revenue stacking is not possible or, or not allowed. Can you explain a little bit about this? Uh, yeah, you said this this challenge of the regulation mm. and the double taxation. What what does that mean? How does that work? So so double taxation means that in the grid code, storage is not uh, or it's it's classified as both a generator as well as a consumer. So when you charge the battery, you have to pay taxes on the charging of the electricity, and when you discharge you have to pay taxes again for the electricity that you discharge. And that becomes a lot of taxes. And yes. that is really expensive, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were referring to the revenue stacking. Can you explain that in, in simple words, what that, what that means? So revenue stacking basically means jumping between markets. So selecting which market provides the best profit during a specific time frame. Um, a very simple example would be that um, you have the storage or the battery providing ancillary service during nighttime. Then during the morning ramp, it switches over to provide energy for the morning ramp. And then during daytime, it do a little bit of arbitrage trading between day ahead and intraday markets. And then towards the nighttime, it, it goes in to serve the ancillary services again. Yeah. And so you were referring that besides these regulatory uh, aspects, there are more uh, yeah, thresholds or challenges in uh, for the energy storage application? Yeah, it is definitely. As I said, the regulatory issues there is that this is not allowed really. And, and there, are, there are changes coming to this, but uh, we don't really see it yet. And also the pace of the market is, is maybe not supporting revenue stacking and, and really jumping between markets yet. Yeah, yeah. so these regular changes then are necessary. Uh, yeah. What does it take to make that, those changes, to get those changes? That is, that is of course, a, a, a really interesting question. I think there are a lot of answers to that one. Um, what I see is definitely that there needs to be a will to change the, the regulatory framework to accommodate batteries more and to really see the benefits that storage and batteries can bring to the system, to see the flexibility that comes with having uh, storage online and why not maybe add a third category into grid codes which is uh, besides generator and consumer you have storage yeah and you think that is uh, the reason why the, the regulation is behind is that due to a lack of knowledge from the regulators that they don't know what the the options and the possibilities are of energy storage or what is it what is causing this delay I think it's uh, partly partly in those lines, for sure, yes, that, um, as you know, updating regulatory framework is usually quite laborsome, laborsome business and, and it, it takes some time. And storage is quite a, a young technology in, on the grid so far, even though it has been along for a lo- around for a long time, but it, in these kind of senses, it's quite young. So um, a lack of lack of knowledge is, is definitely one big reason for that. Yeah. Now suppose that we could solve these regulatory affairs, uh, regula- yeah, conditions or thresholds. We can remove them. What do you think? Where are the major opportunities for energy storage in the space of renewable energy? 
what kind of application would you see? I would say we could actually look at two different things here. One, one is, of course, the interconnected grids, um, where you are coupling then renewables with storage. And, and uh, there you would actually go from a feed-in tariff-based market towards a, a more market-based uh, solution and, and having a more standardized approach of renewables and storage. So if you pair uh, a solar farm with a storage, you get a, a uh, asset which is much more predictable that you can bid into the market. And if you then couple that with smart technologies and smart um, computer systems and softwares, you would actually get automated bidding systems which could take care of the market interface for, for you. And that is actually what we are doing right now in uh, for one customer in US for RW renewables. And uh, so then, then you could actually have uh, the, the storage doing a lot of the market interface for you. So that would be for the interconnected grids. If we then look at islanded grids, uh, I see a little bit different role there uh, and opportunities. A microgrid, for example, could could be made quite easily to to run 100% renewable um, and get rid of uh, diesel gensets. Um, one example would be the Graciosa Island in in Azores, um, where we have deployed a, a storage system for for running the the power system on the island, and and that actually allowed them to to switch off their diesels and and save uh, fuel consumption from time to time. Yeah, if you look uh, and go back to the, the grid application, uh, the grid, the solar power plants. Um, so is is the biggest market then for you in existing solar farms that that will add storage or is it mainly on the new build solar farms? Because there is already a, a lot of assets out there. Would it make sense to add storage to those plants? Absolutely. Um, to quickly answer your question, I would say both. Definitely. I mean, um, we, we see an interest from customers to, to both build new solar plants with storage and then to add storage to already existing solar plants. So I see the business coming to, to both of those. Absolutely. Okay. Um, we're running uh, already out of time. Um, so, so is there any trend in, with respect to energy storage that you're particularly excited about? So I think... I think um, for, for storage and, and uh, the, the flexibility that brings and the ability to, to allow systems to better utilize renewable energy, I think that is the, the greatest point from with, with applying storage. And I think that will play a in, very important role for the energy transition as well as the decarbonization process. So I see a very bright future for storage and, and renewables together. Uh yeah, and I can also imagine when I hear you talk about these automated uh, uh, systems that are do the automated bidding uh, based on uh, algorithms and software, that also must be an exciting area. Absolutely. I mean, um, we are talking about artificial intelligence and, and machine learning and all of that. And of course, those are buzzwords, uh, definitely. And, and we still need to remember that we are not, we are not really unleashing the, the Skynet from the Terminator franchise movies, but but uh, we are we are very far away from that yet. But it helps the the owner and the user of the battery to bring out its its best best features and and help them make the money, and and help the system to actually uh, support the services needed by the grid. All right. Jan, I would like to thank you for this uh, brief interview and uh, hopefully we can meet soon at one of our uh, upcoming events. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Edwin. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.